Hello guys and welcome back to my channel for another video. I hope you're all doing well. Um, some questions that I've been asked recently are, Steve, is there anything that you've picked up in your started from the bottom save? As you've seen on my channel, uh, Bad City uh, under my management have gone from uh, National League South uh, and we have recently been promoted into League One. If you've missed anything on that series, I will leave a link to the playlist up here. Uh, make sure you do check that out. Um, it's it's a good series. It's going really well. However, we have just had a really um, difficult summer. Some of the players that we have picked up have left us. Um, so make sure you do check that out. However, what I will say is in these uh, years of management, so obviously I've gone uh, National League South into National League, into League Two and now into League One. So we've uh, got four promotions so far. Um, three promotions so far. Southampton National League, League, League Two. So we've got three promotions so far and I wanted to share my top 10 tips with you guys for lower league management. So let's get into the video. <laughs> So the first tip that I can give you guys is trials are your friend. Do not scout anybody in the lower leagues to start off with. As soon as you load up your game, offer as many trials to as many free agents as possible. Um, bearing in mind that obviously if you've got a smaller number of uh, staff, they may well become overwhelmed with the amount of trialists. So it is, it is a fine balance, but I, I never feel that you can go overboard with it. So let's jump into the save that I have going on with Hereford at the moment. There we go. So we are in Football Manager. As you can see, we've got a decent squad here. Let me change this to my custom view, which you guys can find on FM Scout as well. I will leave a card to that in the top corner of the screen that will be popping out any second now and you guys can come and get these views for yourself. So I mentioned trials. I've gone into my squad screen and this is what I can see from my squad. My best player is out for eight to 10 months, which is sub ideal. He's a striker as well, so that's, that's not great. We've also got another cruciate ligament injury, five to six months, what's wrong with Danny Greenslade? Torn ankle ligament. So I've got some players that are out for quite a long period of time. It's not going, it's not going too great, but what I have got is I have this short list of players here that I would like to offer trials to. If you guys have watched my North and South Best Free Agents video, you will know about a lot of these players. So the first thing I'm going to do is just offer loads of them trials. Um, it doesn't really, it's, there's no real, um, there's no real scope to this. Um, let's try and find someone else who I thought was pretty good. Uh, let's see if, um, who am I thinking of? Nassim Lanka, I think it was a pretty good one as well. Um, so we're gonna offer these people a trial. We're just gonna offer them for one week. Just the one week and then we will see what happens when they come into the club. So I just quickly offered trials to a couple of players. Um, as you can see, Nassim Lanka has come into the club and you can see that my staff are recommending that he is a star player. Now, this is so much quicker than scouting. I advanced one day in the save um, and already this guy is in with me. He's on trial for seven days and you get a nice little uh, knowledge of how he is. It's so much quicker than scouting. It's probably cheaper than scouting at this level as well. Um, so you can see all the stuff about him. You can see, oh, judging ability five. That is not great too. Oh, okay. This is the best member of staff I have at the moment for this purpose, but I will go over staff soon. Um, so you can see on Nassim Lanka here, Currently operating at a Vanarama national level, so that is the level above. Potential to be a Skybet League 2 winger in the right in, in the future. Um, good personality, fair amount of pace, ability to cross the ball, versatile, considered a technical player. Um, as you can see, his comparisons to everybody else in the team, he's by far and away the best player. Um, even playing slightly out of position here, he is the best option. If we take a look at the goalkeeper as well, Star player, but could still improve. Potential League One goalkeeper, bearing in mind this guy is only 20 years old. So we go in, he's got four pros, no cons, just what you want at this level. Can play sweeper keeper, he's better than my best goalkeeper. 
Um, currently operating at a Valnarama national level, potential to be a League One keeper, as I mentioned. A balanced and normal personality, considered good at shot stopping. So you get a much, much more rounded picture quicker than you would if you were to scout these players. And also, uh, people like uh, Shaper here, you won't actually be able to scout them because obviously he is Italian and most people at this sort of level uh, don't have the scouting budget to go and send people to Italy, for instance. So unless you're lucky enough to have an Italian staff member right off the bat, people like this will slip through your cracks. So that is my first tip. Offer players trials and get a real quick assessment of them. Um, I basically make my decision initially straight away off of what my coaches say. Um, so if this guy wasn't great, I just instantly end the trial. And I know that's a little bit cold blooded. Uh, they come in, it's basically like this guy's probably arrived from Italy and if he wasn't good enough, I'd be like, right, okay, you've come off the plane. Welcome to Hereford. Oh, you're awful. Get back on the plane, get back to Italy. I will see you never again. Um, it's a bit cutthroat, but that's kind of what you need in this. This, I mean, at the end of the day, it's only a game, isn't it? It's not like, uh, not like Maurizio is coming all the way over from Italy, IRL. So tip number two for you guys is to value current ability over potential. Now there's a couple of players in this team that have uh, pretty good potential. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, for instance, Alex Bray, but he's actually got a good current ability as well. Uh, Jordan Nichols, Brad Ash, Tom Owen Evans, and Tommy O'Sullivan, for instance. Um, I'm going to use Tommy O'Sullivan as an example for this, so I'm going to open his pay, his profile now. And you can see he has a current ability, according to my staff, of two and a half stars, but has a potential ability of four and a half stars. Now, I have played Football Manager for over 10 years now, and I can tell you that looking at this guy, He's not what I want in my central midfield. Um, you're When you go into these saves, you're just going to be wanting to get promoted as quickly as humanly possible. So that's why I'm, I always value current ability over potential ability. Um, one thing to bear in mind though, current ability, if you signed an absolute worldie, that will probably make the entire star rating of your team go down on the whole um, that is because they are then being judged by that player's ability so for instance in this squad everyone up until recently was being judged on the ability of Linnell John Lewis who is far too good in my opinion for the Vanarama North South um, obviously he's got some damaged cruciate ligaments um, so probably wouldn't play a great deal this season however everyone is being judged by his ability star player in his prime years is what he's being listed as so for instance James Carey here is being um, rated off of Linnell John Lewis's ability within the star rating. So don't get too carried away with star ratings, but definitely value current ability over the potential ability. Okay, so next tip from me is to look for versatility within your players. I've pulled up Nassim Lanka here, um, the French lad who is part of my shortlist. Um, as you can see here, he is a natural at right attack in midfield, but you can also play right midfield, you can also play left attack in midfield, and you can also play left midfield, but relatively poorly. He's competent there, but he is accomplished at both the uh, left attack in midfield and the right midfield spot, even though he is a natural at the right attack in midfield spot. For me, versatility is key at this level. Um, get players who can play in a majority of positions. Potentially their natural fitness isn't necessarily there, their stamina is not there, people get tired um, and you often need to rotate. I recommend getting people who can play in as many positions as possible to be honest. Um, like for instance, if your right back can kind of play centre back, that's a really good option. Um, I, to a point I'd probably value versatility a little bit over um, current stats. Um, so to, the, the ability to round off a couple of positions. So for instance, if your central attacking midfielder can also play striker or, um, you know, you get these players who can sort of play anywhere through the middle or anywhere across the back line. These players are absolute gems in the Vanarama National North-South and probably National League and potentially even League Two. I, I, I think versatility is such a good attribute to have. So the next tip from me, guys, is to get yourself a senior affiliate. Um, so senior affiliates pay you a annual fee. Um, it depends on who the club is and how far up the Football League uh, tree uh, they are, depending on how sort of expensive the fee is and how much money you make off of them. However, it's not just about money. They also give you a list of players that you can get on loan uh, from them 
or basically no money at all. So in my save with Bath City when we were in the National League South, I requested a senior affiliate and we got Ipswich Town first of all. Um, they weren't really cutting the mustard for me, they weren't really sending me any players, they wanted their players to play at a higher level. So I requested a different one and then got Sunderland. Sunderland were much better for me. Um, and you know they sent me a couple of players that were really good and helped fire me to promotion so the way you request a uh, senior affiliate is you go into your club vision here and you make a board request you go into networking and you go senior affiliate um, sometimes they're more open so yeah as you can see here the chairman of um, Hereford would rather that they didn't rely um, you know you you kind of have to um you kind of have to twist their arm but as i have a been able to do there um andrew graham has gone although we usually wouldn't respond well to your labor point your passion on this issue hasn't gone unnoticed um after what you said we've decided to grant your request so sometimes at this level they don't necessarily want to rely on loan players however i think loan players are vital uh, at this level a few moments later okay so i have advanced in time and this is what my uh, chairman has brought to me and um, we have four options here for a feeder club we have peterborough lincoln tramier and fleetwood um, and you get to make your recommendations so you click on make recommendation and here you can see that peterborough are offering an annual fee of just under twenty-seven thousand, um and obviously uh, Peterborough are able to send players on loan to Hereford. There's no obligation to play the player and may be recalled by Peterborough whenever. Um, Hereford will host an annual friendly by which all the gate receipts are kept by the lower club. Um, obviously the annual fee that I mentioned and then playing in the same division will terminate the link. As you can see though, they are not offering us any specific players yet. Um, if we move on to Lincoln, so there's a much smaller annual fee. However, they are offering us Hakeem Hines uh, on loan who you know this would be a decent player at this level so you would be able to get him for free and probably pay none of his 800 pounds a week uh, wage uh, same with Tramir. Tramir offering just over 14,000 again Evan Gums this guy is so they're offering us a guy who's got a damaged cruciate ligament he's out for seven to nine months good one Tramir. and then finally Fleetwood again uh, smaller annual fee again offering Harvey Saunders on loan this striker he's not too bad um, I definitely think you could get better though to ensure you have options I mean my I've returned it's returned four for me here um, I'd probably have a little look at some of these guys under 23s um, particularly Peterborough um, it's a club that I've used previously before so there's a couple of decent players in here I mean uh, for instance, this guy Bobby Copping, you may have a better opportunity at landing him on loan if they are your parent club. So personally, I would suggest in this situation, I would go for Peterborough. You get a higher annual fee, which is always good. You get the friendly. Although they're not offering you any players yet on loan, you definitely will be able to pick some up from that parent club. So I will go ahead and recommend Peterborough. My next tip expands on the senior affiliate side of things, and that is my recommendation of getting loan players from leagues above. Now, I know this sounds pretty straightforward, but as a rule, clubs from only three tiers higher than the division you're playing in will accept your loan offers. So if you're starting in the National League North and South, you will probably only be able to make it up to a League One club. Sometimes you may get championship clubs that will offer you, but it's very, very unlikely. If you are in the National League, you could potentially go up to the championship. And then if you were in League Two, for instance, you would probably be able to get Premier League youngsters on loan. Um, so what I do is I go into League One and then I go, right, okay, well, I'd quite like a team report on all these teams to see what we could potentially get on loan. So what I've done here is I've opened up the Skybet League One table and obviously I've already got Peterborough in there, but you could look at some of the bigger clubs in the division and say, yeah, we'll take a couple of, we'll take a look at your players. So for instance, I would personally go um, Ipswich. So I've right clicked on Ipswich and I've got a team report. I've gone Portsmouth, get team report. 
and I would also potentially say Sunderland get team report. So now you can see that we will get a team report putting it all together about this whole team and then it will give you an option or recommendations of players that you will be able to get in on loan from that division. Um, you could basically in theory scout everybody but depending on the number of scouts that you have this could take some time so potentially definitely worth setting up on your day one whilst you're at the club. Okay, so we have some scouting reports back. We have the reports back from Portsmouth and Ipswich. Um, as you can see here, they've attached a report on Portsmouth as requested. Any potential loan targets will be shown in the scouting center. And to get to the scouting center, you click on scouting here, and this is where all your recommendations show up. Um, it doesn't look like there has been any from the club so far. Um, so keep scouting, people will appear in here, and you will be able to pick up some cheaper loans to bolster your squad and improve you to try and get promoted. Okay, so the next tip from me is do not pay for players. As a rule, I refuse to pay for players. Um, I try and get people on the end of contracts and stuff like that, or if they are a youth player, try and sign them whilst they are on a youth contract. Um, if you want to take a look at my scouting guide and how I set up my scouts, there is a card that will be popping out in the top corner of the video so you can see my scouting guide. However, as you can see here, we are in the finances section at Hereford and we currently have a wage budget of just over 11,000. Now I can adjust that um, so that we do have a transfer budget of 82,500. However, you will notice that that then puts our wage budget under the value that we are currently spending. This is why I always value free transfers because you're not spending any of the transfer budget so you can prioritize the wage budget. Um, most people at this level within the club vision will have work within a wage budget as an ongoing thing. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you guys go for that. You don't overspend on wages um, and you stick within your budgets. Your board will thank you, I promise. Okay, so once you've identified the player that you want to bring in, the next thing I would say is offer a shorter term contract. Now, by that, I don't necessarily mean six months or anything like that. But for instance, I am offering a contract here to Ricardo Campos. So we go to finalize the promise. So the contracts can be a double-edged sword. So for instance, with Ricardo Campos here, he wants a 12 month contract. Now, I think that's perfect. However, would he be a good player for me at the next level? Potentially. So we could try and offer him a two year deal. However, if he plays really well and will only sign a one year contract, you may lose him for free at the end of that contract. Um, as I said, double-edged sword, positives and negatives to it, but as a rule, I would only offer shorter term contracts, year to two years max. I would never offer anything over the two years. Otherwise you will end up with these players at your club that will be end up becoming disgruntled that they're not playing and then bringing your squad dynamic through the floor. So offer shorter term contracts. So for instance, I think Ricardo Campos, if we look at his profile popping up there, I think that he could cut it in uh, League One, potentially, uh, definitely League Two. So I would have him for two to three years, especially considering he is only 19 years of age. So Ricardo Campos wants this 12 month contract. I can't offer him any more because it is part time. Um, so I'm happy with that. We offer him the deal. Make sure that the landmark bonuses don't wouldn't cripple your club and then you can finalize the deal. He's happy with it. We're happy with it. And we can reassess this situation towards the end of the season. And if he's done really well, we can offer him a new contract. However, bear in mind, we may lose him on a free transfer if he is banging in the goals all season. So next up is an area that some people overlook, uh, but an area that I find very important and that is having the right staff. Um, in my Startup From The Bottom series, the second episode is all about staff. All I do is I basically fire everybody and hire completely new staff all across the board. Um, that ranges from my assistant to my head of youth development, any of the coaches that I've got, um, all my scouts, that sort of thing. I value this so, so much, especially because if you get this wonder kid in, you've, you've picked him up for, for, next, for no money. Picked him up for no money, small contract. He's a wonder kid, could get really good. Um, what's he doing week in, week out? He's on the training pitch, doing nothing with my one assistant manager and no coaches. It's so important in my opinion. As you can see here, I've just started with Hereford, so they have potentially the one of the worst staff in the National League North. Um, they're not the worst in any category, I don't think. Okay, so they are the worst in defending. They are the worst 
in fitness and they are the worst in technical in the coaching team um not too bad not too bad not the best not the worst in any of the scouting and recruitment sections um and then they're pretty low on the physio and they have no sports scientists so when you come into a club majority of staff will accept a mutual termination so for instance if i look at my assistant manager here see it's a new gen it's not even a real person so as an assistant manager in my opinion ben morris is horrendous so i will offer him a mutual termination i don't care you're gone pal um then our head of youth development how good are you i mean sure again not great um but we'll, we'll leave him as he is for now. Chief Scout, twos, judging player ability and player potential. Um, I will say this nicely, you can get much better out there. There are free agents at the start of the game that will come to your club. Um, so to now I've got rid of these guys. Um, they agreed to mutual terminations, so we are fine with that. Confirm those, so contract's gone. So I no longer have... A assistant manager and I no longer have a chief scout. So to find your staff, you go on the staff search up here. As I mentioned, I have, as I've mentioned previously, I have a view from FM Scout. Oh, the card will be in the top corner, as I mentioned previously. Um, but let's say we want to find a assistant manager. So you go on coaching, you go on assistant manager. Now this will bring up every assistant manager that is willing to come to you. Um, you can sort them by rating here. Um, so as you can see, Justin Skinner is a decent assistant manager. Um, he's got much higher uh, coaching abilities all across the board, um, has decent man management, good adaptability, good determination, decent level of discipline and good motivating. I think he'd be a pretty good assistant manager. Um, there's a couple in here that are pretty good as well. Um, Paul Smalley, uh, another decent option. And then uh, where is the guy who I pulled in? Uh, I went for Mickey Adams as my assistant manager um, in my Bath City save. Um, really, really good option. Uh, pretty good all across the board. Good coaching attributes, um, good determination, good level of discipline as well. It's kind of what you want. Um, he is currently wanted by Hungerford. So as you can see, it's a similar sort of division. Um, you will be able to filter this a little bit more. So if you wanted to specifically pick highlight attributes for which role assistant manager, 15 is very optimistic. Um, could we get nines across the board in any of those categories? So this is what the game recommends as a good assistant manager. Um, so for instance, we have Gavin Huron here, who looks like he's a former player, staff attributes. He's pretty good. Okay, so you could pull in this guy. His level of discipline is pretty poor, but on the whole, he is pretty good. You can also look at, for instance, Justin Skinner again, relatively decent, as I've mentioned, across the board. Or you could look at Smalley. We've already looked at Aaron Brown, for instance, another former player. Go on, no, not player attributes. We go on his staff attributes again. He's he's not probably not the best. So in my opinion, out of these guys, I'd probably go with Justin Skinner. To be perfectly honest, I think he's the most well-rounded, and he will help in a majority of these categories. As I mentioned, though, uh, in Hereford, we are probably one of the worst for fitness coaches. So if you want a fitness coach, you select the staff role. You go on coaching, you go on fitness coach. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and then if you wanted, for instance, them to be really good at fitness, let's say 15, what does that pull in? Still searching, still nobody. So 15 is not cutting it. Is there anybody with, let's say, 13? So there is. Um, so you could take a look at Michael Watts here, 13 fitness. Um, not necessarily the best on the determination and the motivation. And um, they are part of the holy trinity of uh, coaches. They kind of need a little bit of it all. So what I would probably do in this situation is I would knock the fitness down to potentially like nine. Um, let's see, let the game catch up a little bit. Yeah, man. So there, and then we add in the holy trinity of motivating, determination, and level of discipline. Can we get them all at nines? Is there anybody? No. So let's drop it down eights still no sixes okay so sixes brings up somebody so alan stewart here from loughborough he's got a seven for fitness uh, pretty good determination really good level of discipline and great motivation uh, this is actually the guy that i did pick up for bath city 
would recommend him. He's worked some, at some pretty good clubs as well, Hull and uh, Huddersfield, and now he's at probably one of the best sports universities in the country, so he could definitely do a lot worse than Alan Stewart. But you can definitely value the staff that aren't at your club. There are so many options out there. You just need to go and find them. I know it's a bit of a pain searching them all and bringing them all in yourself, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. My next tip is in the tactic section. So you've set up your main tactic. Let's say you want to do go for the 4-2-3-1 wide Gagan press, which a majority of people do this year with the uh, inverted forwards and the advanced playmaker. However, if you are winning the game and let's say you need a tactic to park the bus, for instance, if you create a new tactic here, you go up to this plus symbol, you press the plus, you, so, you say create tactic and I want a Park the bus tactic. So this is what it's saying. Defensive mentality. This is the request. Uh, this is what you do in possession. This is what you do in transition. And then finally, this is what you do out of position, uh, possession. So this is kind of making your team really difficult to beat. And then you can choose a formation. I don't like any of those. I would quite like a five back formation, as it is my park the bus formation. Let's try that. Um, so there we have there we have this option of the fullbacks, the three centre backs, the two defensive midfielders, the two wide wingers, and then the shadow striker. So you click confirm, and you can have up to three formations. Um, so I would recommend doing all three. If you're after something that's not working, let's say a route one uh, formation, choose the formation. Let's go four one four one, and then you select them all. So now you have all three tactics. Your team will train them um, each. Um, however, you can set which priority you want. So let's say you wanted to give the priority to the 4-2-3-1 wide Gagan press. You go into the training section. Then up here, the primary trained tactic is what you want. If you wanted to switch it across to one of the others, you click that and it is as simple as that. They will train all three of them. However, the priority will be on whichever one you set in the training section. And the final one from me is don't worry too much about finances. Um, in my starting from the bottom series, I overspent on the wage budget. Um, we went into a massive amount of debt throughout the season by paying the wages and improving some of the facilities. Um, uh, but that was all counted out at the end of the season because we got promoted, we got the money for winning um, the league. Um, and then, you know, we, we moved forward, we moved up, we got the, got the increased revenue and that sort of thing. Also, the value in cup competitions, if you're slightly um, over your balance, but you make it into the second round of the FA Cup, the money that you get from that competition will far exceed the debt that you could potentially get in. Um, so whilst finances are important, and I did mention earlier on in the video, most clubs will value it um, as part of the club vision, don't worry about it too much. I've never been snapped at a lower league level for not paying attention to my finances as long as I'm getting results on the pitch. So value performances on the pitch, don't worry about finances too much, but definitely take it into consideration. So that is it from me guys. That is my top 10 tips for lower league management. If you have found the video useful, don't forget to give it a like down underneath. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, I don't ask for this very often, but these sorts of videos take a little bit more time to produce, a little bit more time to research and that sort of thing. So I would definitely recommend your like and subscribes. Um, I will be back tomorrow for another episode of Started From The Bottom. So make sure you tune in at five o'clock 